You look at the all-time series between these two, Lindenwood leads it 15-9 to nothing, albeit not a lengthy series, not quite as long as one, say, Penn State, but Lindenwood has really come on in recent memory as these two have started playing each other more, joined this league together, and what fantastic matchups we've been treated to in their young history as they throw a shot just wide of Teddy. Barbas works with it behind him. He'll squirt free through to Agnew, and he's got Wetzel on the other side charging with him. He'll give way for Agnew. No offsides called. He'll throw one kicked up again up against the glass over in front of Gang Green. Rick Myroff will pursue. He's right there at the corner. Squirts free. Lindenwood's way. They got a back up. They got an odd man rush. Craig Myroff has to retreat. They'll throw one on Teddy. Top shelf scores. 2-10 into the contest. Already a 1-0 lead for Lindenwood. And that is what we said the Bobcats couldn't do. It was an odd man rush for the Lions. Craig Myroff couldn't retreat quite fast enough, and Lindenwood is on the board. You know, this is something that's really hurt Ohio all season long, Justin. We talked about it honestly too much against Penn State a few weekends ago as that may be the chief reason why Ohio lost to that Penn State team and just like that Ohio far too aggressive on the offensive zone their defenders were not back in position you get caught in that two on one this Lindenwood team will convert every time so it looks like the goal will be awarded to freshman Steve Branchow who has tallied his fair share against the Bobcats this season one nothing Lindenwood lead Barely two minutes into the contest, Bobcats now have to respond. That'll be Branchow's 15th tally of this season. Thrown behind Teddy Yensick yet again. It goes baseline over the near side. Cray, or Jay Mazzarella touches it up, and Ross Pilmore will give chase behind Dushkin. Just over 17 minutes to play in this first period. Lindenwood got here by knocking off Illinois emphatically. The scrappy line I fell only tallied one against this line club as. Lindenwood won 5-1. to one. Here they come the other way. Jared Foose is in front. Too much traffic provided by the Lions. Over baseline they go. Two or three bodies scrumming for the puck over there against the far corner. Under 17 to play in this first frame. Still a 1-0 lead for Lindenwood. Bodies falling all over each other. Peter Mala and Goltz trying to wiggle that puck free. Uh, number seven for the Lions, really scrumming for it. It finally squirts out Lions way. Bobcat defense has to back up again. We got two on two. They'll stop, beat it in front. Gulch tips it away. Got another line pursuing. He gets upended by Gulch, and here come the Bobcats the other way. Got to get more communication down. They'll throw it up. Luciana tries to squirt the defenders. He gets wrapped around and could not squirt free. Now De La Torre fights with it. It squirts out to Luciana. They'll try to throw one on. Just goes off the top corner over to the near side. That would have tied it. Luciana now gives chase at the far circle. They'll be dumped back out, gloved down nearly, but the Bobcats will retreat. Another big shot laid to the neutral zone, and it looks like this one will be on Jonathan Gulch, and we will have an early power play opportunity for Lindenwood, not what the Bobcats needed to try to swing the momentum back their way. Certainly not a smart play there by Gulch. I know he was frustrated after the hit that he took, but since Ohio, as you said, Justin, is trailing one nothing. The last thing they need is to give this very good Lindenwood offense a five-on-four opportunity. You could very easily find yourself down 2 nothing after these two minutes uh, have expired. We saw Gulch in the penalty box for a few occasions in that first frame yesterday. He's become quite common with it this weekend. We won by the Bobcats. Tapped up, dumped out, up into the rafters. Doesn't hit anything, so play will continue on. Marksman's eye by Jay Mazzarella. Ten seconds gone in Gulch's penalty. Big collision right at the blue line. It'll be taken by Jared Foose back to the neutral zone. Lindenwood will try to squirt free. Foose has got a retreat. They got a man in front. They'll throw it in front just wide of the one-timer opportunity. And the Bobcats will dump it back out to the neutral zone. 90 seconds left in this power play for Lindenwood. To the neutral zone it goes again. Lindenwood will touch it up. They'll throw it on Teddy off the right blocker. No. Peter Mala provides the traffic. He'll slam his man hard in the corner. They'll throw it back to the other side. Trying to dump it in front. Pitch and catch back behind Teddy. Now back up to the blue line. They'll Looking to try a shot. Petra Mall was there. Pitch and catch it goes. Now for the other circle. They'll throw one on top of Teddy. Teddy has lost his stick. The Bobcats got to dump it here. Five bodies scrumming for the puck here. One minute left in the power play opportunity for Lindenwood. It squirts free the Lions way. Petra Mall dives and touches it up. Over behind Teddy it goes. Off the near side of the netting. He's been given one of the forward sticks. Not sure who it is. It looks like it was... Tommy Wetzel who gave Teddy his stick. Lindenwood has touched Teddy's stick all the way back to the blue line as it's still scrumming for it. Now he got to throw a shot on right here, looking for it. It just goes wide right. Bobcats got to dump it here. Barbas takes it, and he will throw it back out, kept in by the Lions. 
20 seconds left in the man advantage. Dump back out. Teddy Stick still at the blue line. Here they come the other way. Looking to throw it in front. They'll throw it on Teddy just off the left side. And it will be finally dumped out. What a smart play by Lindenwood to move Teddy Stick. Incredibly smart by them on the offensive end, but Ohio found a way to keep the puck out of the net and keep this score only 1-0. So they'll, they'll set back up. Teddy has his weapon yet again. Five seconds left in the power play from Lindenwood. Slaps out from the blue line off the ankle of Duncan Green and trickles behind Teddy. Successful penalty kill for the Bobcats as Michael Schultz is back on. We'll throw one off to the near side. Teddy taps it away. Duncan Green will dump it over to the near side as Lions give chase. Trying to keep it in. Four check relentless as it's dumped through the neutral zone yet again. It'll be touched up by 94. Tyler Bowman. Tap back. Here come the Lions the other way. Passes the blue line right into the ankle of Pete Tramala. Now dumped through again. Almost just a shot right there. Backhanded back to the other way. Now dumped into center ice yet again. Lions will retreat as Pillmore and Schultz give chase. Much of this game has been spent in the Ohio defensive zone. Run through the neutral zone again. Nick Rostak can't get the stick on the puck. They'll try to dump it down right in front of Ohio's bench. Pillmore, he couldn't get a good shot on it either. DDD pass, it goes right in front of Henry. Throw it up to the neutral zone again. Bobcats got to retreat yet again. Just over 13 minutes to play in this first period. Still 1-0 for Lindenwood. Now it is a Lion who has lost his stick. As it'll be thrown back through. Tyler Pillmore intercepts it. Here they come the other way. He crosses the blue line. He's got Rostek in front. Little bit too much traffic. Schultz falls all over himself. Over to the corner it goes. Nick Rostek. Now Schultz loses a stick. No one can keep their hand on the stick. Under 13 to play. Several bodies scrumming for it. Baseline it goes. Zach Tisdale is there fighting with the line. Luciano there. Shot thrown on Henry. First Bobcat shot. They'll try to cut it in again. And the goal has been knocked off his post. Off a surefire opportunity for the Bobcats. And that'll stop play with 12.37. So it took almost six and a half, or excuse me, seven and a half minutes for Ohio to register a shot. Not a good sign in this early going. Uh, it's definitely been dominated by Lindenwood so far. I mean, they are one of the top teams in the nation, the number two seed in Nationals. So I'm not surprised to see them dominate at this level. But I did like this last rush by Ohio. They finally got some guys in front of that goal, put a lot of pressure on Henry and Nett. And if that goal hadn't been pushed out of place, Ohio may have been able to knock this one up. 12.37 left to go in this frame. Still one nothing lead for Lindenwood as John Luciana takes the face off. It'll be won by the Lions, goes back to the baseline, now thrown to the other side. Collision up against the glass as De La Torre scrums for it. And we'll have another stop at the play. We'll get a whistle and another penalty here. Not quite sure who it's on with 12.30 left to go. Six Lindenwood shots to only one for the Bobcats. We see a frustrated look on one of the Lindenwood players here, so it may be him that's headed to the box, and it is. It appears that is number 11, I'm not sure. It's Tim Hennessy, the sophomore out of Chesterfield, Missouri. So now a critical juncture for the Bobcats in the early going, their first man advantage of this early game. You know, Ohio, we've talked about it almost too much. They've struggled at times on the power play. They did record a power play go how goal, however, earlier in the weekend, earlier in this tournament, they've got to do the same thing today, Justin. You have to take advantage of these chances. Bobcat power plays. It's dumped back behind Agnew. If we take him, they got goal to the blue line. They'll send it to him. Might try to find his man Kratz on the other side. One-timer sent from Fodor off the left blocker and denied by Henry. Thrown back, dumped out, and a clear with 20 seconds gone in the penalty for Tim Hennessy. Bobcats will set back up, try to collect themselves for another good rush of ice. 90 seconds left in the power play. We will have another whistle up, and as they touch it up, now the Bobcat gets sent to the ground, and we will have more pushing and shoving as it looks like Josh Fodor is really into it with number 88 for the Lions. That is Nicholas Bunstedt. So Teddy raced off, and we will have another Lindenwood penalty and a solid 90 seconds of a three-on-five opportunity for the Bobcats. What a gift they've been given in the early going. Well, this is strange, really. Uh, Lindenwood, one of the top teams in the nation, really a smart group, just not playing smart hockey right now getting kind of caught up in this Bobcats aggression. And if Ohio can get you to fall for this type of uh, silly play, they can really uh, take advantage of it. Now with the five on three, Lindenwood's coach can't be happy with what's happening. So we'll be number 94. Actually, we got three lines in the box now. We have number 94, Tyler Bowman, number 11, Tim Hennessy. And we will also have Josh Fodor in the box for Ohio University. So four total players in the box for right now. So. Four Bobcats on the ice right now to three Lions, excuse me, five. Vision was blocked here. So, yes, 
We'll have a five on three. It will be for the Bobcats, so they got to deliver right here. Back to the blue line it goes. Nick Rostek feeding it back and forth with Barbas. They'll dump it down deep to Schultz. Looking to throw one on. Good positioning by the penalty kill for Lindenwood. Passes it to the other circle. Dak back down deep to the baseline. They'll throw it right in front off to the near side. It goes. That'll be a stoppage of play as the goal was once again knocked off his post. We have 111 left in the initial penalty. 141 left in the second. So still just over a minute left of three on five. Boy, that's frustrating for Ohio. Henry again knocks the net out of place. I'm not sure if it's just not stuck down very tightly or, or what the problem is, but. Ohio just unable to get some consistency going after the net's been pushed out a couple of times. 11.40 left to go in this first frame. Still 1-0 Lindenwood as it's won by the Lions. Back, they'll slap it through the other way. Nick Ross is going to have to hustle to keep it in, and does. He's got Schultz there to provide the hand, and we'll have another stop to play as a little too much stalling right there, right in front of Gang Green with 11.32 left. You have to like Ohio's line that's out there right now. It is the combination, of course, of Rostick, Hillmore, and Schultz uh, with the forwards. Then you have Barbas, the top scoring defenseman for Ohio. This is exactly who you want if you're going to tie this game up in this crucial junction of the first period. The faceoff will be taken to the neutral zone by Tyler Millmore, and he'll want it back for the Bobcats. Nick Rostick will tap it back to Zach Barbas with under 11 and a half to go in this first frame. Michael Schultz right in front of the penalty box. It'll go to Tyler Pilmore on the other side. He'll throw one on just wide left, and it goes over to Rostek at the near faceoff circle. Dump back to the baseline again, looking for a dump in. Rostek throws another one on right off the chest of Henry. They'll throw it in front again and gloved down by Kent with 45 seconds left of five on three. Wow, good save there by Henry. After the initial shot by Rostek, he lost the re or he lost the shot, gave a rebound opportunity for Ohio, but he was luckily able to corral that one, or else the Bobcats could have tied this one up. John Luciano will take the face off against number 17 for Lindenwood, Cameron Chinnery. Tap back to Mike Kretz, circle to circle pass, trying to find any sort of daylight. 38 seconds left in five on three. Intercepted by Lindenwood in a clutch clear right there. Disappointing move for the Bobcats as now Teddy and the entire Bobcat team will have to set it back up. Just not a good pass there, Ohio. There was no opening, shouldn't have made that pass. Jonathan Dolch will try to dump it back in off the stick of Lindenwood skater. Here comes Agnew, gets slammed hard against the boards. Lindenwood try to clear it again. Bobcats got to find a little open room. 15 seconds left on five on three, and Lindenwood clears it again. So this will effectively end the five on three opportunity. The Bobcats will have about another 30 seconds of a five on four men advantage. Ten and a half left to go in this one as the Bobcats have it dumped by Lindenwood yet again. Teddy awkwardly almost gets caught out of position, has to dump it off his right leg. Bobcats have got to get their heads level. Tommy Wetzel. He'll give way. Oh, he's got Agnew on the other side. Agnew will dump it back and scores! Brett Agnew ties it on the power play. And with 10-20 left, 1-1, one, one, the Bobcats are on the board. We kept saying how crucial this junction was. This was the biggest moment so far in this period. If Ohio failed to score on these two power plays, it could have doomed them for the rest of the game. But just like that, Brett Agnew, one of the top scorers for this team, Changes all momentum. The crowd is going absolutely wild. Huge play by that young man. We weren't sure if Luciano would be able to squirt through and feed that one to Agnew as he was wide open on the other side, and he got it done. Brett Agnew, his 19th goal this season, and he has gotten Bobcats back into this one. A 1-1 one -one tie with 10-20 left. Bobcats will win the faceoff. Throws it in front of Lindenwood Finch. Here come the Bobcats back to the zone, dumped out by Lindenwood. We're back to five on five here after the power play tally. 